Emily, God bless you. Hi, Anna, God bless you. I pray everyone is well. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. Hi, hi, Kalia. Hi, Ostia. Hi. Hi, Denise. Thank you. Guess what? Good evening. No, you're not late. Hi, Sweba. Hi, Georgia. Hi, Imani. I have a sister named Imani. Hi, Sonia. Hi, Mom. S Oh, <laughs> amen. Amen. And um, I'm happy about that. Hey, Tiff, how are you? <laughs> For anyone who doesn't know, we have the same name. Hi, Charmaine. Oh, I'm so happy that you're able to be on. I noticed that you weren't on and I was hoping everything was okay. God bless you, Tay. Hi. Hi, Sister Olivia. God bless you too. Thank you. So guess what? I don't have my typical camera it was not working that's what made that's why there was a delay i'm telling you like stuff happens like when it's time to go live things begin to take place okay hi simone yeah my camera like it just would not connect it wouldn't work so it's nothing i can do we have to go with the macbook's camera which which is really good though like this is a nice camera. It's good. So shout out to Apple products. They are worth it. I feel they're worth it. Okay. Um, hi, Terry. God bless you. Hi, Gabby. Hi, Teresa. Good evening. Um, for anyone who's joining us for the first time, we wait five minutes before we start teaching to give people the opportunity to get on. Y'all, pardon me. I am so cold. I am freezing. And it's 70 degrees. No, it was 68 degrees in here. I just turned the heat up to 70. And it's it's pretty, you know, it's not cold outside, basically. So, but I am freezing. And my, my nose is running. I'm sorry. <laughs> I am cold. <sighs> I just, I turned the heat up. So, well, I actually turned it on and then turned it up. Hi, Nikita. So yeah, ready to see what the Lord, let's bring this closer, is going to be talking about tonight. You know, I, tur I found a way to actually turn that setting off. I was like, oh, we don't have to go through this, but still, even after I turned it off, I could not connect it properly. So what can you do? Oh, well, thank God for the camera that's already here. It works just fine. Hi, Faith. Hi, Antonique. Hi, TGN. Hi, Mason. Um... Hi, Alejandra. Thank you so much. God bless you. And let's get into prayer. Hi, Clayton. <laughs> Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you so much for your love, for your goodness, for your mercy. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' name, for your presence. And I ask, Lord God, that you would teach your children tonight, Lord God. Let wisdom and revelation rest upon us all. Let understanding and knowledge rest upon us all. And Father, I'm asking that you would speak to each and every one of us by your Holy Spirit. Regardless of what comes out of my mouth by your spirit, I pray, God, that you give a specific 
individual word into the spirits of the people who are listening. I pray, God, that you speak directly into their hearts. I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you would speak directly to their specific situations in the name of Jesus. Lord, you know the things we've gone through, the hurt, the rejection, the molestation, and everything else that has caused so many of your children to be bound by masturbation and self-pleasure and self-gratification. And I'm asking, Father, in the name of Jesus, for, no, I'm thanking you, Father, that you are going to free them. I'm thanking you, Lord God, that you are going to heal them. God, we thank you that you're a healer. We thank you that you are a liberator. You will free us, God. And when you free us, we will be free. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for your power, not just to free us, but to keep us after we have been freed. We thank you for fighting for us. We thank you for this great love that you have for us, Lord God. And I'm asking that you would teach all of your children this evening, Lord. I pray in the name of Jesus that you would teach us from your throne in the name of Jesus. I'm asking that you would cover our homes, cover us, whether we are in our cars or at work in Jesus's name with the blood of Jesus cover this live stream, cover all of the electronic devices in Jesus's name, cover all the inhabitants of our homes and cover us in Jesus's name. I seal every portal, every entry point for astral projecting spirits. I seal those shut with the blood of Jesus. Lord, I ask God that you would close every door that the enemy is attempting to open to gain access to us because Jesus, your word says that when you close a door, no man can um, open it. And we thank you for that in Jesus's name. So I'm asking God that you would just move by your spirit this evening, pour into us, speak to us, and let us be surrounded by your holy angels. Let us be surrounded by your presence, God. Be a wall of fire around us in Jesus's name. Let your angels be encamped around us to deliver us in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we just say speak because your servants are listening. We praise you because of your holiness, because of your goodness, because of your faithfulness. We love you and we thank you for your patience with us and we thank you for loving us the way that you do. It's in Jesus's name that we pray. Amen. Amen. God is so amazing. God is so holy and we thank him for his holiness. Glory to God. We thank him for his holiness. Um, we thank him that he's not like the world. He's not like people. We thank him that he's perfect and there is no sin in him. Sorry about that. So I want to know, has anyone done the fast? Y'all let me know. Did, did you do the fast? Okay. I want to know. I didn't turn the comments off just yet. I'm going to get into the lesson for tonight about the doorways. But before we do that, I want to know who has done the fast and who is moving forward, ready for their deliverance. <sighs> amen. Hi, Jessica. Hi, Marie. Tiffany did the fast. Amen. Amen. Michaela did. Uh, Sister Olivia did. Amen. Glory to God. Cassandra, Sweva. Um, okay, I talked about the details of the fast in yesterday's lesson, so you can catch that at the end. Amen, 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 amen. Glory to the name of the Lord. That makes me so happy. I am so happy that y'all are doing what you need to do for your freedom. That is such a mature Christian thing to do because we know that some things only come out by prayer and fasting and fasting gives us such access to spiritual power, authority, anointing and freedom. It takes us deeper into the holies of uh, holies. It builds us all the way up in the realm of the spirit. So glory to God for that. I'm happy that y'all pushed through. I'm happy that y'all pushed through hunger. Um, maybe even some of you pushed through being pregnant and still fasting. So that is so awesome. 
And I can't see all the comments because I'm streaming. So if any of you have said that you did and, and I didn't put it up, I missed it. Okay. I apologize for that. I don't always see every single comment, but um, I'm so excited about that. I'm so happy that you all decided to fast. And what you did was you took some accountability for what you're going through. And you said, I'm willing to fight. And so I'm so happy that you did that. I'm happy that you have aligned yourself with the spirit of holiness and said, I'm working with you and I'm going to do what I have to do. Because when it comes to things like masturbation, we are so involved in that and it's so connected to our flesh that we need to show some initiative and in saying, I'm willing to sacrifice. I'm willing to do something to break this flesh down. Amen. So I'm so happy that you did it. I'm so happy for you all. God is so amazing. Glory to the name of the Lord. So we've just, we, I feel like we've covered so much and now I'm going to turn off the chat so I can't see it anymore. Y'all can still comment. I just can't see it. Um, we have covered so much over the past few days. The information has been I don't want to say like an overload, but it's been a lot. And I know that it's been timely for you. And I'm so thankful to the Lord for that. God is just so amazing. I'm just so thankful. Thank you, Father. I thank the Lord that he wants us to be free. He does not want us to suffer. He does not want us to have to carry around guilt, condemnation, shame. He does not want us dying sexually immoral. He does not want us bound. And so these teachings combined with your fasting and your efforts to become free, it's so powerful. And I'm just so happy uh, for this season of deliverance. I pray that um, the enemies that you've seen today and seen in the past, you won't see them anymore. Glory to the name of the Lord. I'm going to, by God's grace, at some point, get together some material. So you all know, well, you may not know, but on the website, there is a free downloads page and then there's a free resources page. So I believe on the free resources page, you can find prayers for deliverance, um, instructions on how to take communion and various other things. And so I'm going to send out a newsletter within the next couple of weeks with some good prayer points for you all to keep fighting. And I'm also going to put those uh, the, the prayer points on to the website. So at your own convenience, when you want to, you can download those to your phone. If I were y'all, I would definitely take advantage of the, the free resources and the free download. And I have even you uh, taken the thing from the website and I've taken communion with it. You know, it's really good instructions. <laughs> Glory to God. So we have gone over so much. We've gone over different spirits of lust, how they travel in gangs. Whew. We went over sexual thoughts, imaginations, triggers for masturbation. We've had we've talked about appropriate things in marriage, how masturbation within the marriage bed is not right. Okay, just because you're married, marriage doesn't make unclean things and sin good. OK, it doesn't do that. So the, the scripture really says the marriage bed is to be kept undefiled. OK, so that puts some responsibility on the married couple to have a healthy, great, enjoyable, but still clean sex life, free of perversion, free of immorality, because as it says, those who are sexually immoral and those who are adulterers, they will be judged. OK, so God gives married people that responsibility to keep their marriage bed pure. So we talked about that. Uh, we talked about wet dreams. We've talked about morning erections. We've talked about ovulation, those things that naturally sometimes happen with our bodies that would cause us to want to masturbate, that would cause us to think about sex. We talked about those things. And so now we are going to talk about some doorways. And I want you, as I'm talking about these things and teaching these things, I want you to be present in your mind and just listen to the Lord. So that prayer point for him to speak directly into your spirit, 
This is this is what he wants right now. As I'm speaking, I pray that you are listening with no distractions. And my hope is that things begin to come to mind. And the way the Holy Spirit works, he will begin to bring things to mind, situations, events in your life, things that have happened that cause you to feel this way or that way, um, things someone may have said to you, and uh, just a whole bunch of things. The Lord will begin to bring it to mind because that's one of the ways that he works with us to lead us into his perfect will and onto the path he would have us to travel. <sighs> so yeah, we covered a lot and let's pick up where we left off. So our previous or the, the most recent scripture that we read from last night was 1 Corinthians 6 and 13, New Living Translation. You say food was made for the stomach and the stomach for food. This is true, though someday God will do away with both of them. But you can't say that our bodies were made for sexual immorality. They were made for the Lord and the Lord cares about our bodies. And so that scripture gives us our understanding that, listen, it doesn't matter what I think my needs are in my Adam nature, when I'm being carnal, when I'm feeding my flesh, it doesn't matter what I feel my needs are. I, will, I can never say that I have to be sexually immoral. I can never say I had to masturbate. I can never say that I had to do something that was outside of the confines of what God calls right. Okay. So we can't say that because our bodies were not made for sexual immorality. He says, you know, your stomachs were made for food. You can say that, but you can't say that your bodies were made for you to be sexually immoral. He says your bodies were made for the Lord. So for so many of us, we were not born with that knowledge. So many of us did not grow up with that knowledge. But now that we have come into Christ, I want to tell you your body, your body was not made to be flooded with marijuana smoke. It was not made for any other drug. It was not made for drunkenness. Your body was not made for sexual immorality. Your body was made made for the Lord, to be used as his temple, as an instrument of worship for him. Glory to God, something that is supposed to bring him glory, something that's supposed to be holy and sanctified. Glory to God. So that's what your bodies are made for. And so that's something to keep in mind when you feel entitled to do this thing, when you feel entitled to engage in certain things, when you feel like some doctors will tell you and some preachers and pastors will tell you, oh, no, it's OK. You need to have wet dreams. It's perfectly normal. No, you don't have to be bound by any of those things. Amen. Amen. Your bodies were not made for sexual immorality. And for anybody who doesn't know about sex dreams, I went over this, the wet dreams, excuse me. I went over a scripture, Deuteronomy 23 and 10. And we covered that yesterday. So it's really important, if you can, to keep up with all the parts of this teaching on masturbation. And Lord willing, it's going into a playlist at some point. So God, and it also goes on to tell us that not only were our bodies made for the Lord, but that he cares about our bodies. And so this is why it's important for us to not be ashamed to talk to him. He's our father and he's the father that loves you. And he's seen all of your dirt. He's the father who still provided for you when you didn't want nothing to do with him. Some of your parents will cut you off or not talk to you for one thing or the other. God says, listen, when you turned your back on me, when you hated me, when you served other guys, when you took the devil as your father, I still protected you. I still loved you. I still provided for you. I still spoke to you. I didn't turn my face against you. I didn't cut you off. I still kept speaking to you, leading you and guiding you. So he is the good father. He is the father of fathers. You can talk to him about anything and everything. So when you're having this struggle, take it to him and speak to him about it. Okay. You don't hide it from him because he cares about you. He cares about your body. He cares about the things that go on within your body. He created you. He created you for a purpose. And from what I can see, according to scripture, and from what I see around the world, 
anything God can do to help us. He is willing to help us. He's not willing for anyone. It's not his will. It's not his purpose for any of us to perish. He wants us all to come to repentance. He wants us all to experience the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. So you can bring this to the Lord. He cares about you. He cares about what's going on in your genitals, okay? He really does. And it may sound strange. Um, again, we may not hear it. Maybe we'll hear it more from now on. Or we're hearing it now. I'll stop saying that. But he cares. And over the years, I've prayed prayers like, Jesus, I need you to be Lord over my vagina. I really do. I hope this isn't offensive to some people, but to anybody who's actually struggled with something or is struggling or you're of marrying age, okay, and men be in your face and you have to stay pure in your mind and in your intent and things of that nature. Listen, I need you to be Lord over that area too. Don't tell me, you know, we just, we get saved, we speak in tongues and then we skip off into the sunset and everything is okay. Absolutely not. <laughs> You have to be very intentional about being pure and sanctifying um, the Lord and body, soul, and spirit, every part of you. So yes, pray that prayer. If for any reason you feel like you've ever struggled in that area, ask the Lord to cover that area with the blood of Jesus. Ask him to cover the inner workings of that area with the blood of Jesus. Okay, let that place be covered. Glory to God. So let's see. In order for us to view these occurrences in our bodies from the right perspective, we have to have the right mindset. And our minds need to be renewed from its former way of thinking because our thinking often controls our behaviors. Remember how the Bible says, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Your thinking shapes your identity. OK, so this is why the enemy wants to get into your mind and he wants to start controlling your thoughts, the imagery in your mind and the way you think. What you don't do is submit and surrender to whatever the enemy is attempting to do. You shut him down. You will not think like that. You don't want to think about those things. OK, you can make those declarations over yourself. Uh, when we change our minds, when we begin to change our minds, we change our approach to life. And we also change our behaviors. So I pray that you wrote that down. I pray that that makes sense to you. But it is so important when it comes to masturbation because masturbation starts in the mind. It starts with you thinking about having an orgasm. It starts with you thinking about sex. It starts with you thinking about your ex. It starts with you thinking about whoever you have a crush on or whoever you're about to marry. That's where it starts. OK, so you have to change your mind. You have to say, Lord Jesus, I need my mind to be renewed because I, I have a mind that at some point was flooded with pornography. I have a mind that has been flooded with sexually immoral image, images and memories of things that have occurred in my life or sexual situations that have occurred in my life. And I need you to renew my mind. God, I want to retain all of my memory, but the memory of the way sex felt with people who I was not married to, the memory of the times where I fornicated, the memory of the times where I masturbated, the memory of this situation or that event, take it away from me. Let it not be something that floods my mind. Let it not be something that is able to flood my heart. God, sanctify my mind to the capacity that it cannot hold any of those images anymore. Because you said that if I'm in you, I am a new creature and all the old things have passed away and all things have become new. So God, that's what your word says. I need you to give me a new mind, a mind that's not going to lust, a mind that's not going to crave masturbation. I need a new mind that will see the opposite sex or for some people, the same sex in the appropriate way. Glory to God, glory to God. And he will do it. So one thing you have to do, remember this, as you're stepping away from masturbation, you're overcoming masturbation in this type of bondage, you have to ask God to give you a new mind. And so when you ask God to give you a new mind, God will start showing you all the things that were wrong with your mind and why those things were wrong in the first place. So what we're going to do 
is we're going to talk about some doorways, okay? Some things that have taken place in your life. And this is why I say you need to be listening to the Lord right now. But some things that have taken place in your life that caused you to go on this way. So I'm just going to go over some things that I have in my notes, things that cause people to turn to sexual immorality. We become attached to things like masturbation, and these demons gain access to our lives through certain events. And here are some of these events. This, this is not, <clears throat> uh, you know, limited. It can be other things, but these are the main things that came to mind. Our dreams. Our dreams are a way the enemy can gain access into our lives, the way he can start planting seeds of bondage. And so this is why I say, talk to your children, examine your past. If you have dreams and you don't even understand those dreams, write them down anyway, because at some point it may make sense to you. Remember, our dreams are spiritual experiences. And in the realm of the spirit, there's no such thing as day and time and years and hours. So you may be seeing something that you're going to encounter in, in the next five years. You don't know what, what, what you're seeing, but just write it down. So these things, these doorways happen in our dreams. I will never forget the first time I had to be about 11 years old. I told y'all that that season around that time, but I had to be about 11 years old no older than 12, when I had this first dream about having a boyfriend. That's so why I had to be about 11 because I don't, I hadn't really had a boyfriend by then. <laughs> but yeah, I had this, <coughs> sorry, there was a guy, he was young, he was about 13 and he expressed interest in me in the dream. And then he took me into this familiar place. It was a store like off of Bushwick and... Jeff, not Jefferson, Bushwick and Weirfield. Maybe there used to be a store right there or something like that, but it was like a corner store. When I was in junior high school, I used to stop there and get like cocoa bread with butter on it. <laughs> anyway, so Brooklyn, I don't know if other people did that, but anyway, he took me into that store and in that store, so it was a familiar place for me. It wasn't anything for me to feel strange about. It was filled with his family. And he said, I want you to meet my family. And I was like, okay. And he was saying, I want you to be my girlfriend. Okay. I want to be in a relationship with you. And so you agree, come meet my family. I agreed. And I went to meet his family, his family. It was full of people and they were all high, high, possibly shaking my hand, possibly giving me some type of hugs, possibly giving me food. I don't remember those details, but I always remembered that occurrence because I remember waking up thinking, oh my goodness, it would be so nice if I had a boyfriend who liked me as much as this, this young man liked me in the dream. Now I'll be 35 in a couple of months. I will never forget that dream. That was over 20 years ago, y'all. And I know now that that was an incubus demon. I know for sure. And I know that me being receptive to it at that age opened a doorway for it to invade my life spiritually, especially since I wasn't a born again believer at that time. Doesn't matter that I grew up in church. I still had not grew up in Christ. Amen. So demons will gain access to your life and start influencing your life and circumstances in your life through your dreams. Because again, we are spirits. Our spirits are made in the image of God. Our spirits don't slumber or sleep. God doesn't slumber or sleep. We may rest, but I don't think we go to actual sleep, right? Our bodies have to sleep. And so that leaves our spirit engaging in the realm of the spirit. And sometimes demons, in, they invade that space. And they work wickedness. That's why praying before you go to sleep and knowing how to pray warfare prayers is so important. You may not have to scream, shout, or any of those things, but just speaking by faith in the name of Jesus, what will not happen and what will happen is powerful enough. Amen. Amen. So dreams are one way that the enemy will gain access to your life and cause you to get into this type of bondage. Okay. Let's see. The next way is inheritance. Uh, mother or father did something which gave demons legal right to attach to your life <clears throat> for various reasons, ways, and through various doorways. 
So this is something um, that may be new for us to hear in this way. But yes, sometimes our parents unknowingly, their parents, our grandparents, our great grandparents did something that caused us to be in some type of bondage. So I'll, I'll give y'all examples from my life. I tread cautiously uh, because I do want to stay covered spiritually, but I, I will share what the Lord leads me to share. So I know for sure that on one of the sides of my family, there was incest. I know that for sure. Okay. And I prayed a prayer one night. And I went through deliverance and it wasn't anything crazy or anything like that, but I, I went through deliverance. And when I went to sleep, I had a dream and I saw a funeral, y'all, for something named incest. And it said it gave on and this thing was written on this thing's tombstone. And let me tell you something that the casket was nailed shut. It was sealed to where it would never be opened again. And on the tombstone was written incest in all capital letters. The, the day, the year that it entered into my family was on the tombstone, 1844. And under that year or next to the year was a list of things uh, pertaining to that particular demon. So sometimes our families have done things and it doesn't mean that we did it or we did anything to invoke it, but because no one ever genuinely repented and turned from the Lord and severed it from the bloodline, it can stay there. I prayerfully got together, got together a list for my mom and I said, hey, mom, can you pray this list of prayers? Can you possibly, you know, break some covenants? And so she said, sure. Thank you, mom, so much. <laughs> she said, sure. She said, and I got some own stuff. I want to add to it, too. So can you just, you know, go over... Uh, breaking maybe some covenants, uh, closing some doorways and things of that nature. Y'all, let me tell y'all a testimony really quickly about that. My iron levels were so low that I had to take 125 milligrams of elemental iron three times a day. And one of the prayer points that I prayed was concerning my iron levels that my mom had to speak. Do y'all know that now I don't have to take iron daily? And if I do, it's just one time a day. OK, after after that. So a lot of these things come down generation to generation to generation and parents and I'm fully grown and went on. I, I live completely separate from my mom and everything. But still in all parents have so much authority, whether or not any the thing was intentional, because I mean, come on, if there was anything going on with my blood, it definitely didn't just come from her. It was something that was passed down from generation to generation. But parents, y'all have so much authority over your children. To any of the adults, if you've been struggling with sickness since you were born, or if there's a chronic illness you say that ha that's in your family from your mom's side and your father's side, whatever. Listen, if you can, go to your parents and say, listen, I need you to pray this list of prayers because these are things that I've been struggling with. These are things that have happened to me or these are things that I've gotten wind of through the, through the spirit of God while I've been in prayer that the enemy wants to invade my life with. So or through dreams, I've seen this happening to me. You know what I'm saying? So listen, I need you to break some covenants. Our parents, I'm almost 40 years old. This is almost 40 years ago. My mama had me. I know she does not remember every single thing. And I know nobody knows everything about their mom and their dad. So I know she doesn't know everything about her mother and her father and so on and so forth. But whatever I get wind of, hey, can you Come against this and come against that and come against the next thing. This things, some of the things I never even experienced, but because the devil is a liar, I'm going to make sure I never experienced those things. Mom, I need you to pray for me. So yes, some of the things that we go through are by inheritance. And some of you may be ashamed to ask your parents to pray certain prayers. And right, let me tell you something. My mama, she may be listening. You could tell how long that list, that list was. There she go right there. I had to turn it all the way on so y'all could see my mama right there. Listen, <laughs> it was a long prayer. <laughs> Sorry, my voice is cracking. It was a long prayer. Do you, do you hear me? That was a long prayer. I got very specific. And I even the next day or the next day after that or whatever, I was like, oh, wait, we're going to do this thing. We're going to do the next thing. I don't care. OK. And if you think of something else, <laughs> if you get wind of something, 
break it off of me. Okay, so please, parents, you start seeing things with your children, go ahead and start saying in the name of Jesus, every covenant that's been established concerning uh, whatever your child's name is, I break it now. I repent for whatever I did to go into it. Um, I lose the blood of Jesus. I repent for my role, whatever, whatever, whatever. And that's it. Parents, you see some of your children, you know, a lot of people say they were born um, gay or with this sexual identity. Get to praying. Start praying. Hey, I see a little something on my child and I may have engaged in this thing or that thing. I don't know. I may have watched something. Like I told you the story of Derek Prince. He said that mom, she she played with like a pendulum while she was pregnant. It wasn't even anything like she was intentionally engaged in doing something wrong. Like she really knew it was bad. She thought it was going to be okay. She thought it was just going to be like in a, a, a little old, uh, old wife wives tale or something like that but it ended up causing this to happen to her child right so listen parents pray for your children pray for them cover them if you see a little something if you see a little something you say you know what that may seem off break it off of them speak life Speak life over them and break that thing off. No, this will not happen. I break it in the name of Jesus. And sometimes it's not enough for you to just break it off. As a parent, you also have to repent for whatever role you may have had in it. And if you don't know, ask the Lord to reveal to you what your role in it could have been. It may not have been you. It may have been your mother, your father, your grandmother, your grandfather, you, you know, but, um, you know, since that child was birthed out of you, parents, that is so important. And let me just say to the single people, it is so, it is crucial for you while you're single to start going through deliverance. This is like, this is like cream of the crop time. Do y'all hear me? Okay. While you're single, go through your deliverance. While you're single, break covenants and things of that nature so that you never have to see your child going through those things, okay? Amen. So um, Tay says she's been doing that all week and she's been having the child come against those things too. Amen. Get them actively involved. So something that y'all know, uh, maybe you don't, but since I was very, very young, I was overweight, okay? It's definitely um, overweight. And that has been such a struggle and it doesn't, it had been a struggle and it doesn't matter. I was over 300 pounds. I lost a lot of weight, um, but still would hit like maybe like a plateau or my weight would steadily rise. And my mama here, I, I got, I got a witness. I eat right. <laughs> like I eat actually very healthy. I'm certified in whole, uh, whole food, what is it? Some type of plant-based science and nutrition, something like that. I um, have my certification as a health coach, know all about nutrition and even work with somebody. And she's lost over 60 pounds from the diet plan that I've given her. So I know about food and things of that nature. And let me tell y'all something. I have done a 40 day fast and gained weight. Do you hear me? And that's when I was like, that's a demon for real. Because I know people who's going on a 40-day fast and they have lost 40 pounds or whatever. And literally, I, I remember one time I gained weight and I'm like, this is spiritual. And so let me tell you, y'all see my pictures and everything and I absolutely think I look great, okay? However, and I know that because of my lifestyle, because of the way I eat, because I stay active, I know I'm healthy. But one of the reasons why I fight so hard to get down to what I would say is a normal weight is because I want to break that type of bondage so that my children will never have to go through any of those struggles, okay? How many of us have seen, um, you know, that like it's, it's just something with weight issues passed down and families and things like that and not, I don't, I don't want that. That's not going to happen, okay? That's not going to happen. What if the parents are not alive and you are now the guardian? Well, you still have, if you have the authority, then you have the authority. Um, but yeah, yeah, so I fight that. 
So it's not about settling, like you've lost so much, you look good, whatever, whatever. It's about me living a life that I would want my, or attaining or aspiring and pursuing a life that I would want my children to live. So I wouldn't want my children to have to be bound to be a certain size and a certain weight just because or whatever plateau, whatever the, the cause is. So I'm going to pursue what I want for them. You know what I'm saying? So that it's not in me and that I'm completely freed from that. And that's completely done with by the time they get here. And so they'll never struggle with it. OK, even after they're out the house and they're not just eating whole grains and veggies with their mom. <laughs> All right. So let's go on. So some things come by inheritance. So as a single person, that's why I fight so hard to live right, to stay pure, to um, be healthy and things of that nature. That is one reason why. OK, as a single person. And this is some good time for you to do that when you're single. Hi, Sister Legenia. Good to see you. Y'all know she went viral on TikTok. Like, I just found this out. Like, she told me in the most humble way. <laughs> but y'all, I'm talking about like over 5 million views on TikTok. Okay. Do y'all hear me? Like, what the Drew Barrymore show she was featured on. Okay. Can y'all go check Sister Legenia out um, on TikTok? Sincerely, Legenia. Uh, we love you, Legenia. Anyhow, so inheritance is definitely one way that we receive these spirits and inheritance is definitely a way that some people can be bound in certain sins. Okay. So masturbation is something, let me tell you something. There are some people that grandpappy masturbated, they pappy masturbated and they did too. Sometimes they are taught to do it. Sometimes these things are normalized, okay? And so sometimes these things come into your life by inheritance. And right now, this is a great time for you to start writing and thinking, okay, let me reflect on some dreams that I had that show me, you know, a lot of the times we'll have dreams and see ourselves masturbating and then wake up and masturbate. And what you just saw was the enemy carving out a doorway into your life. And what you were supposed to do when you woke up is say, in the name of Jesus, I'll cancel that assignment against my life. I cast it down and you start making your decrees against whatever the enemy has just tried to do to you in the realm of the spirit. Repent for the act, cleanse your mind, cleanse your body with the blood of Jesus, confess it as a sin and say, Father, wash me with the blood of Jesus, cleanse me from all unrighteousness, rebuke the devil, rebuke every plan of of masturbation, lust, and sexual immorality that the enemy may have for you, and you move forward. But so many people have told me, hey, I had this dream, and then I ended up falling into it. I ended up doing it the next day or that same day. If you would take it for what it is, this is the enemy showing me what his plan is for me. And I refuse to allow it to come to pass. The Bible says that I have power over all the power of the enemy. I have authority over all his power. And so this won't happen because I said so. And I said it in the name of Jesus. And I said it in the authority that Jesus has given me. And you can even throw out those scriptures. That's why it's good to memorize them. When you're saying it, say it against the enemy. Nope. In Luke chapter 10, verse 19, Jesus said, in verse 18, Jesus says, Satan fell like lightning from heaven. You have no authority to tell me or show me nothing about my life. You say nothing. Go somewhere and die. Fall down and die. Eat your flesh and drink your blood for that matter, since you want to try to play with me. I'm covered with the blood of Jesus. No wicked scheme, no wicked plot will ever come to pass in my life. In Jesus name. Okay. So when you have those dreams, you wake up. So we cover two things, dreams and inheritance. Now let's go into rejection. Y'all, this is such a big thing. Rejection, abandonment, trauma, those things lead a person into sexual immorality. Those things lead a person into masturbation. Abandonment and rejection, listen, it doesn't even have to be um, that, you know, somebody consciously chose to hurt you. It could be one of your parents passed away when you were young, right? It could be something like that that would cause you to feel abandoned or to feel rejected. So listen, 
rejection is a huge doorway for sexual immorality. I remember, I, I believe it was like Chris Rock making a joke, like somebody made a joke about, you know, well, this has been just an ongoing joke, period, that women who have daddy issues, they end up on the stripper pole and uh, things like that, or they end up with sugar daddies and this, that, and the third. What happens is let's take the daddy's issue name off of it or title off of it, and let's call it rejection. When a person who God has said is supposed to have a particular role in your life or a person that you have accepted to have a particular role in your life, when they default on that role, when they move out of that role, when they step out of that role, whether it's by death, whether it's because they made the conscious choice to, whether for a time they were distracted, um, you receive something called rejection. Now, this happens to people when they go into the foster care system, when they go into, when they have uh, been in a situation where they've been adopted, you will see sexual immorality, masturbation, promiscuity, because what they're doing is they're not conscious of it. Subconscious mind is so like that thing is real. And what they're doing is they're attempting to make themselves feel good and feel better and fill a void that is there. Even if they don't know it, they're attempting to fill a void that's there. OK, some people who are um, adopted, they may have a sexual identity crisis and things of that nature. That all stems from rejection and that stems from abandonment. It causes issues with your purity and you're willing to open up yourselves to the wrong thing because the right thing rejected you. So if the wrong thing appears to make you feel good, then you'll take comfort in the wrong thing. So, so many people have struggled with rejection and abandonment, and it has resulted in bondage with masturbation. And some have started when they were very, very young. Okay. Now let me tell you, I remember reading this book. It was, uh, by Zane, this author who used to make like erotic novels. And I remember reading the book and in the book, one of her books, the little girl, she had this sex addiction, right? And she was married and everything, but she still had this sex addiction. She had this addiction to masturbation and it didn't matter that her husband pleased her. She still would do this. And so come to find out, she talks about, and they didn't even take this as a, a main issue. Do you understand? Like they just said it in passing. And I'm like, this is so deep. Well, now that I'm saved and I think back on that, because she said her mom got the phone call that her dad, I believe he was like a police officer. He had been killed like in the middle of the night. And so she says she remember hearing it as a little girl. And she said she went and she laid in her bed and she masturbated for the first time. And she was in single digits, somewhere between the age of six and eight. And I remember thinking, she's a little young to be doing this, but it was something that immediately happened because she had been abandoned by her dad. It didn't matter that it was against his will. And if he wanted to, I mean, of course it's a story, but he would have been there. She had just been abandoned. And she turned to something to make her feel good and to make her feel comforted. And it's just as simple as that. There will be so many women off of the corner right now who are prostituting themselves, who are out in um, brothels, if that's still a thing, right? What is it, those sex houses? There are women right now who have the fans only or only fans, whatever it's called, um, who are showing off themselves, uh, masturbating on camera and doing things like that because they are finding gratification and the attention that they were supposed to get from a parent. They were supposed to get from a spouse. They were supposed to get from the person that they got pregnant by or the person they gave their virginity to. And since there is a void in that area, they are attempting to fill it through sexual pleasure. So it becomes a form of bondage and it becomes a subconscious thing. And we don't even realize that, man, you remember how we learned on Monday that lust does not roll by itself, but it travels with demons? Rejection stands and it waits. Abandonment, it stands and it waits. And when you experience that, it'll say lust, 
masturbation, sexual immorality, pornography, come on in, come on in. It will, it will start orchestrating things for your life, for you to be exposed to certain things like pornography, things that, or it will, uh, y'all, I'm telling y'all, you know, what's coming to mind, the situations that I have encountered with people being in deliverance. Like these demons, they work according. They say, okay, daddy rejected him. Daddy rejected her. Watch what happens. Watch what we have the legal right to do now because one of the parents defaulted on their God-given roles. Yes, mommy wasn't there for him. Mommy wasn't there for her. Now we have the right to do certain things to this person because mommy defaulted on some roles that she was supposed to have in their life. Y'all, y'all are getting me in this comment section, but I'm so thankful to the Lord that this is helping y'all because this is why it's not a good, well, listen, however it happens, it happens, but it's better for y'all to have knowledge. And this is what I've been telling y'all. It's better for you to have knowledge so that you don't just receive deliverance, you can stay delivered. So that you know how to sit down and pray and reflect on things with the Lord and have him speak to you about why things are happening in your life the way they are. Because there's a reason, okay? There is a reason. It's a reason why you are in bondage. Something happened, okay? Something happened happened. And so rejection and abandonment absolutely is one of those things or one of those things or two of those things that can lead a person into a life of sexual immorality. Amen. 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 Kristen, that is so good to hear. Amen. And this is a good scripture for any person to know who um to know okay if they've gone through any type of rejection from a parent you can say over yourself when my father and my mother forsake me the lord will take me up the lord will take care of me if for any reason they forsake their god-given roles god will take care of me god will help me in those areas Amen. Amen. God will be the provider. He will be the security. He will be the friend. He will be the comfort. He will be the confidant and everything you need him to be that your biological father should have been or your natural father should have been or your natural mother should have been. So if we've been wondering, one of the doorways is definitely rejection and abandonment. Because when someone rejects, rejects us or abandons us, it leads us into trying to feel good, trying to be accepted. Okay. And masturbation is a way, at least you can say some people could still be virgins and be caught up and bound by masturbation. Cause what you're saying is I accept myself. Okay. I accept myself. Sex is supposed to be something and the orgasm is supposed to be something that's experienced. And it's supposed to be an expression of love. And it's supposed to remind you of love and attraction and acceptance. And so when you're seeking after that, that's all you're seeking after. Like when you're seeking after the the um, orgasm and you're going on masturbating or you're out there being sexual, sexually immoral with someone, you're just seeking after love and acceptance and pleasure, something to make you feel good, something to make you feel accepted. And that's that subconscious mind. And that's how that realm of the spirit works. It's very powerful. Some of us wouldn't even know, like, I didn't even realize that was rejection. I didn't even realize when I started getting bullied, you know, for some reason, some I, I <clears throat> found out about pornography or, you know, when I started be, being bullied in school, my friends, my peers begin to reject me. You know, I started to do this thing or that thing, but it puts so much um, context to why people go through what they go through. I am an advocate of fathers being there for their daughters, telling their daughters that they're beautiful, that they're pretty, complimenting their hair, complimenting their clothes. If they made some little, some little food that they're not really good at making yet, saying that food was so delicious, um, taking their daughters out sometimes and just talking to them, helping them to feel valued and seen and letting that be a tradition. And let me tell you something, a woman will be fully grown and still be like, daddy, when we going out, <laughs> I, I want to, I heard about a new restaurant and I want to do this thing. It's so important 
for a father to be a father, to know how to just take his daughter aside and say, I see you. And maybe he won't necessarily say that out of his mouth, but his actions will show. Hey, I see you. Hey, mom, talk to his wife, get her dressed up. When I get home from work, I'll take her for a drive and we'll go and we'll get some ice cream or, or I'll take her to get some burgers, <clears throat> sorry, or I'll take her to get her favorite food or something like that. Um, just so that your daughter can know what it's like to have healthy uh, relationships with a man and know what the standard of treatment is. You know what I'm saying? So that she can feel, <coughs> excuse me, seen. And so that, listen, after her first heartbreak, if it happens, she won't get to feeling rejected, feeling pushed away, wondering if she's beautiful or not, wondering if she's valuable or not, um, trying to go somewhere and masturbate. She won't go through that because someone has been affirming her her entire life. So listen, if he's been talking to her, then he'll tell her, you, you don't have to. Listen, some men are not worth your time. You're too good for that and things of that nature. That's the type of father. Listen, women, we value our father so much naturally because that's how God made us. We're supposed to. And the one thing my dad, I remember my dad was pretty quiet about a lot. But um, I had a friend who slept with one of my boyfriends when I was younger. And I wanted to fight her. Like, and she wanted to fight me. You know what I'm saying? And I remember speaking to him about it. And he said, if you got to fight for him, then he's not worth fighting for. And I will never forget that. Amen. <laughs> Let's get it together because my dad passed away. Okay, 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 okay. But when your father pours into you or gives you any type of valuable information, when he spends that time with you, it means something and it can put you on the right path. Bet you I ain't never think, yeah, I ain't fighting for nobody. I ain't fighting for <laughs> Why? Because my daddy told me I didn't have to. <laughs> okay. And so that's how important a father's role is. You know what I'm saying? This is like almost 20 year old advice and I still remember it. And no, I ain't fighting for no man. You don't have to. As far as I've been told and I believe you, you don't have to do that. If he wants you, you ain't got to fight for him. You know what I'm saying? So Amen. Amen. So our fathers, the fathers that are listening, take time with your daughter. Listen, y'all trying to save money, take her to the park, talk to her about her day, you know, that type of stuff. So that when a man comes into her life and say, yo, baby, yo, baby, yo, she's like, Psh, my daddy taught me better than that. A man needs to come better than that. I seen a man talking uh, to a woman better than that. My daddy then taught me about this thing and the next thing. She'll be the one doing the rejected. Do you hear me? <laughs> and she'll be confident about it because that's something that a father should instill into his daughter. Amen. Amen. So when a parent, for whatever reason, is not in their role, then it leaves space for rejection and abandonment. So let's go on to trauma. Trauma can also be a, a form of uh, categorized with rejection and abandonment. Something traumatic happened to a person and it triggered something in them to start feeling for some type of comfort. Some sex makes you forget about a lot, right? When you, when you doing it, it can be as addictive as a drug. I, I tell young folk, let me tell you something. Before you think about having sex with anybody, first of all, you should be sexually pure. But before you think about it, I want you to know that the same hormones that are released from a person's brain when they're taking methamphetamines, when they're smoking weed, when they're smoking crack, those same hormones are released when you're having sex and when you have an orgasm. So you better be careful because it can become addictive. It can become like chasing a high, something to make you feel good. And when you've experienced trauma and when you've experienced shock, yeah, you will seek after something to make you feel good. There used to be a show, I don't remember the name, something about intervention. These people who were on drugs, it was never just because they decided, <laughs> oh, I just decided to pick up a crack pipe. Something happened. Somebody said something. Somebody told them they would never be nothing. Maybe they got kicked out of school. Something happened. 
that caused them to turn that way. You understand? They had a miscarriage. They lost their children. Something traumatic happened to them to make them go in that direction, okay? To be trying to find something to gratify their flesh. Masturbation is just a way for you of self-gratification. After something traumatic has happened to you, after somebody has said something that shocked you or you experienced trauma in your own life, there are people who have seen their parents killed. Um, there's uh, people who get into accidents and then when they come back, they are just sexually immoral as they come. Trauma opens up a doorway for lust, masturbation, and sexual immorality. Let's talk about abuse, okay? This can be a wife who is being abused by her husband. This can be a child being abused by their parents. But when a person puts their hands on you or when a person starts trying to break you down mentally, it can drive you into the bathroom. It can drive you onto some sites to purchase some things to go make yourself feel good because you can't get it from them. You can't get it from the people who you're supposed to be able to get it from. So you'll try to give it to yourself. Abuse will absolutely drive a person into masturbation, whether it's mental abuse, bullying at school, uh, physical abuse, emotional abuse. Those things can drive a person into masturbation. And one thing that I think we can all say, we can see how this would happen, molestation. Molestation sends people into the bondage of masturbation. It's so sad. And it's so sad that a lot of the molestation that takes place takes place by family members. And working in a, a daycare, working with younger children, like I told you, I work, well, I didn't tell you all this. I have worked in a daycare, but I've also worked in the uh, for the Department of Education in New York. So you see things and molestation drives children into touching themselves. I have seen that. I remember I was going to change a child's diaper. Okay. And she was, maybe I was changing her pull up because she was about three. She was always crying, always seeming traumatized when she came to the daycare and she didn't come that often. And they would let the parents drop her off for a few hours, come get her after lunch or whatever. She, I maybe seen the child just a few times and I worked there for a few months. I remember I was changing her pull up and she started rubbing on her clitoris saying somebody's name and saying, ow, like it hurt, whatever he does down there. And, um, you know, Binky does blah, 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 blink, Binky, Binky, ow, doing that, y'all. I, I think I started crying and I told, but the parents said, oh, it's okay. That's just, you know, kids just do that. No, let me tell you something. Nobody just hauls off and start rubbing on their clitoris. That's something that you learn to do. Somebody, somebody showed you that. Okay. That's why you know to do it. Um, I know someone else, she worked with small children, maybe kindergarten, preschool. And she said during nap time, it's one girl. Who, will lay, who was laying down and either she was finger popping herself, she was masturbating in some way during nap time, moaning, making noises and everything. And um, she said the child's father would come there. I won't even. Either way, these things start happening when a child is molested. A lot of that, uh, the masturbation and the sexually immoral behavior and the touching on the selves, that's... A, Sometimes it's because somebody taught it. I listen to everybody who says, hey, I started young or whatever. I ask the Lord to bring up any memories that are suppressed. Do you hear me? Any repressed memories that you could potentially have, you need to ask God to start bringing those things up because trauma, going back to that, causes you to forget things. Trauma will cause your mind has, has this natural way of protecting itself. So you have to say, God, prepare me. He may not do it tonight. He will prepare you to be able to handle the memory.
because sometimes we can't handle the things that we've gone through. And so our minds will put that thing all the way away, all the way to where we can say, I know something happened, but I can't remember what, or you may not remember it at all. Okay, when it's really traumatic because your mind is attempting to protect you, because if at that time you would have fully registered what had happened, you may not have made it. You may not have survived. How many people have gone through molestation, have gone through those types of things and ended up killing themselves or ended up talking about intervention, getting on drugs and things of that nature. So sometimes our minds will protect us. You need to start saying, hey, um, father. Any repressed memories that I have that are causing me to stay in sexual bondage, bring them up to me. Prepare me to see it because when you have those memories, in a sense, you relive it. Prepare me to experience this thing again and put it in the right place and, um, and handle it and process it the right way. Okay, so they, these are doorways. And I'm sure there are other things, but these are the main ones that came to mind that take place in our life or that are opened in our life that will cause people to get into the bondage of masturbation. And some of y'all, listen, won't even remember that you were molested. But guess what? The devil remembers. And so there are just some spiritual legalities and laws at work. And he will send a spirit into your life to get you to start doing that because You've already received that spirit of molestation. Molestation goes along with rejection because somebody has put you away from whatever place you were supposed to have. You've been rejected. If you were supposed to be a daughter, your father molested you. He rejected you from that role and he treated you in a way that you weren't supposed to be treated. God didn't intend for him to do that to you. Anyway, you have to ask the Lord, hey, bring these things up. Bring these things up to me. Help me to remember um, these things. And, you know, when I've done deliverance with people, people will start saying, you know what? I do remember uh, somebody in uh, touching me in this way. Some people will contact me for deliverance and I will say, listen, I need you to go on a fast. And I need you to start asking God this thing and start praying about this thing. And I'll speak to them again. And they say, I remember I remember somebody performing oral sex on me when I was a child. I remember somebody taking me to the side and touching me in this way. I remember this thing or that thing. So sometimes we can push things to the back of our minds, but yet we're still, you know, grown or whatever and, and still masturbating. We don't even know why. So it's important for you to listen to what I'm saying Take that as a real point, a prayer point for yourself. God, help me to remember, prepare me for the memory and then help me to remember any time I was molest molested. And listen, molestation and incest, depending on who molested you, will go hand in hand. And you want to break that curse of incest off of you also. OK, because in scripture, there are some curses that goes along with incest. And Christ has redeemed you from those curses. So you find out and in the name of Jesus Christ, destroy those curses off of you and your bloodline. Amen. Amen. So those are the doorways. Dreams, inheritance, rejection, abandonment, rejection that can be somebody bullied you. I hate to see when these children kill themselves. It bothers me so much. I cannot stand bullying. It bothers me so much to see children who are killing themselves. And I just wonder, were these children, did these children know Jesus? Were these children bound in masturbation before they before they killed themselves? You know, it's, it's so bad. It's so bad. And it's such a satanic tactic that the enemy is doing to the children nowadays. So dreams, inheritance, that's through your bloodline, rejection, abandonment trauma, molestation, and abuse. These are all areas that this demon will use to access you and cause you to start seeking out self-pleasure and self-gratification because at some point someone failed you, okay? And someone rejected you, someone pushed you away. And so in a way for you to accept yourself, you have gotten caught up in this bondage, okay? <sighs> All right. I'm going to stop there.
We've been on over an hour and I feel like I've said a lot. Did I say a lot? I feel like I've said a lot and I want to give you all the opportunity to process what I've said to you. I want you to take some time. A lot of you have been fasting. This is the perfect time before you break your fast, go to the Lord and say, God, I'm having some real, uh, have a real moment with the Lord. I mean, we should always have a real moment, but really open up to him about things that you haven't opened up to him before uh, concerning. Start speaking to him and asking him, God, show me some, some repressed memories. Prepare me. Show me why I'm in this bondage. Show me the things that were done to me or said to me, the things that happened to me, the time a person failed me, the time I felt pushed away, the time I felt rejected, the time I felt bullied. Show me so that I can deal with it or I can allow you to deal with it and heal me from it. Amen. Oh, amen. Amen. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you so much. Thank you so much for your goodness. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your love. Thank you, God, for having this talk with us. Thank you for giving us these words, Lord, to seek you oh, and to be completely healed. And I pray, God, that your children have an amazing time with you this evening in prayer. And I thank you for each and every person you gave the strength to, to do the fast in the name of Jesus. And Father, I pray that each and every person under the sound of my voice begins to take their walk and their freedom seriously. And they begin to have some fight in them that says, whatever I need to do, I'm willing to do it. And Lord, I love you. We love you. We thank you for speaking to us. We thank you for being here. And I just ask that you continue to speak into the hearts, the minds, and the life of each and every person who's listening right now. We love you. We thank you. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Um, oh, God is so good. And as he's bringing those things up, you'll receive, there are just depths and levels to your freedom. Amen. And this, what I'm telling you to do will add some depth to that deliverance that you're going to experience, okay? And so this is why I say have patience with yourself because you'll experience deliverance tomorrow, Lord willing, amen? That's that's his will. That's what he told us yesterday, right? Um, but that deliverance may open up some 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 space now that there are things that out of the uh, which will be moved out of the way there will be space opened up for the lord to be able to start dealing with other things that were hidden by which you were delivered from okay so it's like an onion there are so many layers to why we are the way we are and there are so many layers and and steps as far as us just walking in sanctification and purification. And that's what God wants for us, right? So we submit ourselves to him. We humble ourselves to him. And we say, God, I'm working with you. I'm in agreement with you. Take me through the process. Take me step by step. Heal me from what I need to be healed from. Deliver me. It's like sometimes I tell people, there have been times where I've gone on a fast just for the Lord to tell me, you need to go on a fast. <laughs> like legit, like there have been multiple times where God is like, okay, you need to go on a fast now. And I'm like, okay. And then I get on a fast and he's like, all of this, you need to fast. I'm like, oh goodness, I need to go on a fast. When this fast is done, I'm going on a fast. <laughs> and this fast is going to be for this thing that God showed me I need help with. OK, so glory to the name of the Lord. He knows what he's doing, but it's a process. You be patient and remember to love yourself through everything. Lo you have to love yourself. You know, scripture says you love your neighbor as you love yourself. And the, the way we're able to love other people and accept other people and be kind and gracious to other people, it's a reflection of how we feel about ourselves. Amen. <clears throat> So I adjure you, I, I, I beseech you, love yourself through every season and through what you're going through. And remember to always do your very best, okay? Make the best decisions that you can make 
for your life with the knowledge you have. And don't beat yourself up about your past struggles because you didn't know. And if you did know, maybe you were too damaged to handle it the right way. But thank God for that person who you used to be saying yes to the Lord and getting you to where you are now so that you can start dealing with things. And 10 years from now, you're going to look back on who you are or who you were today. And you're going to thank God that you started dealing with things. And it's always going to be something that the Lord is working on in your life. Doesn't have to be, you know, childhood trauma. Maybe it will be. Who knows? But God knows the appropriate seasons to deal with things. And so just work with him. Have peace and take joy in the salvation of the Lord through every season. I always tell people that without love, it's impossible for anything to grow. My plants, you see one right there and I have more. I, I like to have live plants in wherever I live. And I like to talk to them. I like to rub them because I feel like if I don't show them love, they're not going to grow. <laughs> And so I tell people that about their hair, people who say they don't like their hair. I'm like, well, first of all, you have to love your hair if you really want it to become something that you're envisioning, right? We have to love. That's what it, God's love causes us to grow. If he didn't love us, we would not grow. Okay. So anything you want to work on, anything you want to become better, you love it, right? You want your body <clears throat> to improve. That's fine. Work towards your fitness goals. Make sure you love yourself though, okay? Make sure you always love yourself so that no matter what, even if it takes a long time to, for those goals to be seen, even if you have to switch things up, whatever, you can say, you know what? I still love myself. I'm still beautiful. I'm gonna continue to move forward to what I want to see when I look in the mirror. But that doesn't mean that I don't love myself, Okay, so always love yourself, even through your struggles. So if you're struggling with masturbation, you may say, I, I hate masturbation, but I love myself. And I know that in my weakness, God, his strength is perfected. Glory to God. So even in this weakness, God is going to show up strong for me and he's going to be my strong deliverer. Okay, amen, amen. God is so good and... um. I just thank him for his goodness. No, anything that's alive, <laughs> my pets, whatever, I, I do talk to them and let them know that they're beautiful and I love them. And um, yeah, that's what I do. So, and I sing, I sing to my pets. I make up songs for them. Some of them act like they don't like it, but I know they love it. You know what I'm saying? But my plants, yeah, I do. I stroke them. I, I say, you know, I, I let the sun shine in and stuff like that. And yeah, whatever's alive, whatever I want to grow, I make sure that I pour love into it, not from an occult practice or anything like that, but just because I, I connect communication with love. Okay. So yeah. Anyway, y'all are awesome. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for listening all this time. And I pray that the Lord really, really huh, just does all the Mr. Chipmunk. Absolutely. I talked to Mr. Chipmunk too. He's a part of the family. <laughs> I call him and literally he will come running. Sometimes I don't know what he's been doing. I don't know if he's been sleeping late because of the nuts. Like he's just on a food overload or whatever. But Mr. Chipmunk, sometimes there's a delay in him coming, okay? I don't know what that's about, but he comes and he gets his food at some point. Yeah, yeah, I like to pour love in that way. And um, yeah, so you guys are so awesome. God bless you all. Fanta, I'm gonna be about four hours away from St. Louis. So I'm, I, don't want, I don't wanna do the extra traveling because I'm already gonna be far from where I live. <laughs> but one day we'll meet each other. Okay, I just saw Fanta in, so I was reminded of that. Amen. That's right. It makes some decrees. You will grow. Okay. You, you will be long and luscious and thick in the name of Jesus. That's right. You want something to grow? That's what I do. Anyway, I talk to it. <laughs> you let it know that you love it. Um, and you know, one thing I actually also heard about plants is that they, they have like a, 
it's weird. So for lack of better words, like a consciousness of what's going on around them, literally, I, I won't even, I, I guess, I guess I won't get into it, <laughs> but yeah. So that's another reason why I make sure that they, that this is like a very loving, love filled, Christ filled worship music, peaceful atmosphere. Um, so yeah, anyway, I love you all. God bless you all. And I pray that if it's the Lord will, that we are back here tomorrow, 7.30 Central Standard Time.